Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I'm Shannon Ogden. And I'm Ann Trujillo. And voters could make Denver the first city in the country to decriminalize psychedelic mushrooms. And there are plenty of people who would be happy to see this happen. Others believe it's a long, strange trip the Mile High City can't afford to take. Obviously, this is uncharted territory. And if we're going to explore it, nothing less than the full 360 treatment will do. So here is Denver 7's Russell Haythorn. If you've ever been to a show at Red Rocks, you may have seen concert goers using club drugs. But do those drugs have a place here? Do you have one minute to sign a petition to decriminalize mushrooms in Denver? People shouldn't be going to prison for a plant. It's a terrible idea. Um, Denver is quickly becoming the illicit drug capital of the world. Tonight, we're going 360 with the man who has high hopes of taking the measure to the May ballot, the director of the think tank who says Denver is heading down a dangerous, drug-induced path, the patient with terminal brain tumors who says shrooms changed his life, and the casual user who says they're non-addictive. People can only sign it in your presence and you have to physically watch them sign it. We start with Kevin Matthews, who headed up the group collecting signatures. Denver has a strong history of drug policy reform. He's taking his lead from the legalization of pot. We modeled our language after cannabis legislation in uh, 2005 and 2007. Matthews says shrooms have helped him break his own cycle of depression. Mushrooms have enabled me to look outside the box that depression creates, it's a nonviolent drug. But Jeff Hunt is calling his bluff. This is a psychedelic drug where you're typically, typically gonna go into some type of trip that can last anywhere from three to six hours. Hunt heads up a public think tank at Colorado Christian University. He wonders how far it will all go. First weed, then supervised injection sites, and now decriminalizing psychedelic shrooms. The truth is we have no idea what the long-term health impact of these uh, drugs are going to do to the people of Colorado. While the Denver Chamber and the Downtown Denver Partnership have taken no position yet, Hunt sees a definite economic downside. At a certain point, parents are gonna look at the city of Denver and go, I don't wanna take my kids to that city. I don't think tourists are gonna to wanna to come to this state. The matrix gets even more complex with patients like Chris, who has end-stage spinal and brain tumors. The mushrooms seem to have calmed them better than any drugs that they've been able to give me. Uh, I'm not saying it's a panacea or that it's for everyone. I just want to be comfortable. And still others argue shrooms are less habit forming than opioids and other drugs. See the therapeutic benefits that are available and be create an environment where people can talk about set and setting and dose. Those 9,000 signatures are now under review as the future of fungus fuels a fiery debate. It is a medicine. I'm concerned we're going in the wrong direction rather than really encouraging people to lead healthy and productive lives. 